Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's not my test, so. Oh. Yeah. Ah. Oh, I didn't clean that off. Oh, well. Right there. Let's see if we get it on here. You want to get kicked out? No. All right, I got to get this together. I need a hook. Hey everyone, sorry I am late. I uh just finished my test, so I don't know. Uh ran a little bit longer. Hey you guys. So I did not have time to prepare. I was uh been on that test for two hours, so I apologize, but we will do this nonetheless. Hey, what's going on, Vassal? All right, let's see. Let me get the camera right. Get some things situated. So for this one, to do in, um, we're doing the split feather wing today. Finally caught you live. Hey, Randy. Yeah, you did. Uh. I'm running late today, but it's all right. We'll make this, uh, yeah, I'm trying to find all my extra mallard flank. I've got mallard. All right, if y'all got any questions or anything, throw them out there. I'm trying to find my mallard. I'll use this one. This is the one I processed last year. Mallard flank I processed. So, typically used for the wings is you're going to use mallard. Hey, Jody. Uh, we're going to use mallard. Uh, you can use um, teal. Anything really for the wings. Uh, for the cat scale patterns, you're going to want to use your wood duck. Uh, that's just got the nice barring and everything. I uh, do not know on the test yet. I just finished it. That's why I'm a little late, but uh, seemed okay. I don't know. We will see. Uh, what else am I getting here? Oh, the hackle tips. All right. So this is another thing. Uh, all right, I'm going to get situated without going crazy here. All right. Get some materials together. We got some hooks here, materials, and we should be good. Okay, so ideally, what you can use, and it's going to be the same principle as we talked about yesterday on the split wings. Got a nice corned beef on the smoker. Heck yeah, that sounds good. The uh, the only difference really with to, with doing feather wings is your thread selection you don't really have to worry about going to a thicker thread we're just doing uh, feathers so usually you, you use an 80 and that's going to be fine um, and Randy I know it, with some of the threads it gets kind of tricky to understand when you use the eight aughts versus the uh, the deniers uh, and turn their just I know on the on the eightos on the aughts, the smaller the number, the stronger the thread. And so, like if I've got an eighto here, that is stronger than this fourteen o I have. Oh, that one's not in focus. Let's put that one. Well, oh my fingers in front of it. 14 it's not one to focus on it um, you know I've got that one let's see where's my simplify okay I've got this one this one is a 24 let's see my bug in here this is well not focusing today let me do this. Oh, that's why. Okay, so this is your 24-aught right here. 
24 out. This is a super fine thread. Uh, very, very tiny. Very, very small compared to this Ado is a lot thicker. Now that goes in the same terms as a 70 denier. 70 denier and is a lot smaller than a 210 denier and this one's up here this is a lot thicker thread and it's a 210 210 denier but threads and stuff that's a whole nother that can be a whole nother uh class just understanding that i personally think that's just going to come with time so back to this we are going to tie in um using standard 80 thread or if you feel better you want to go with the 70 denier it'll be the same or go with a 140 that's going to be okay you're just going to run out of uh some uh you're going to thicken your hook up especially when you do these dry flies you want to uh you want to really uh keep keep the materials down to a minimum um especially when you're doing these wing flies Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. If you go, I always most of the stuff I tie with is a is a eight o or a seventy two denier, seventy denier. Uh, but yeah. All right, let me get my wax here, and we'll get a thread base started. Um, so I'll find out after I do this class how I did on that test. Well, uh, this class has been kicking my butt for a few years, so. Keep coming back to this one. But your split wing, very nice. Mostly used for your cat scale flies, but you can also do on your hoppers, stuff like that, because I'll go over materials in a second. Oh, where's my glasses? Can't see. 210 is really good when you're doing those big flies, uh, crappie jigs, when you, when you want to uh, creates some bulk for sure Okay, so this one I'm going to start my thread here and For video purposes, I probably should use a thicker thread, but I love I just love using um, Ado it's just my go-to um, But yeah All right, so I got thread base started and I'm not going all the way back and uh, yesterday I had a question about, uh, you know, after you tie in these wings, the wing is the first thing you tie in, um, just because you, it sets the stage for, uh, hey Brent, sets the stage for your tapers, um, getting your taper right on your, on your hook, so that way you can come in with another material, and, uh, see if that'll settle down there, come up a smidge. Um, yeah. So, oh, darn it. So, for materials we're going to use, you got mallard. So, basically, duck flank, uh, duck feathers. Uh, you can use your, your teal feathers. Those are good. They've got nice barring. Wood duck, mallard, gadwall. Um, they're, they're all really good feathers for this. Um, because what you're getting is that nice, the the barring, the speckles, stuff like that. Another popular choice for um, for wings is CDC. Nice thing about this for the feathers with these is they're very buoyant. They've got the natural oils in them, so they make them nice for wings. And uh, they just CDC is awesome material. Um, another selection you have when you go through when you're going through all your hackle and you're wrapping your hackles save your tips you get a collection of tips of your feathers and those are great for wings you got to go through and pair them up when you're ready um, but you always have you know all the tips to all your feathers and uh, makes for nice wings uh, on any of these flies that you didn't decide to use uh, so save those tips when you don't throw them away. You've got 
plenty of use out of those tips. Um, let's see what else. CDC, duck flank, and yeah, that's going to be your feather wings pretty much. Um, hey, Ricky. So, we'll start off with, we'll take a, we'll zoom in here. And like I said, guys, sorry I got in a little late, took my test, and uh, took a little longer than expected, but that's okay. I had to take my time. So on your feathers, strip all your fluff. And again, I'm a beginner myself, so I'm still learning techniques uh, and stuff like that. It's just if I was to sit down at this vise, this is how I would do it. Um, this is going to be your basic way, is you can take your feather... Wet your fingers, go ahead and pull them, preen them back, find your length. Now there is more advanced ways of doing this, but for this video, for beginners, this is how you can go ahead and do it. You're going to lay your feather on your, pull them together, nice and tight, like so. Once you got your base started, you're going to, about right there, Figure out your length. You want at least the shank length for your your wing. At least the, the length of your shank, which is behind the eye, and to right about there, right right before it curves down. And then you're gonna lay that right here, right on your shank, and then squeezing. You can do a pinch wrap. What the pinch wrap does is it allows you to get control and drop straight down. Pull down a little bit, not too hard. Couple wraps back, loose wraps, straighten it up, holding on to the back end, like so. Getting an idea where you want your wings. Those look good. Come in with my scissors. Uh, someone was asking yesterday, They these are the Dr. Slicks, but uh, let's see if I can get this in there. Yeah. But like uh, Jody was mentioning, uh, Andronimus, Phil Miller, Philip Miller, he does have these on his site as well for Andronimus Fly Company. But, uh, and they come right here, straight back, lift up a little, get your nice taper. And you got your taper right there. Hey, Harry. And we're just getting started. I got a little late myself. And then go ahead and wrap all the way back. Cover all that up. Okay. Now, since I've got that right there, this is, and yesterday someone was asking, uh, I think Randy was asking on one of the flies. This is where you can come in and you can finish up the work on your fly, on your wings, or you can go ahead and come back and add your tail tail material if you want get that in there um, on these feather wings like this you're going to want a you know nice tapered body nice thin tapered body so but for the video we're just going to focus on the wings wrap it back up fill that in and we're going to come right back up to the top here we're going to pull this up and we're going to jump to the front just like so we're just going to get them to pop up a little bit Okay, Let's see if I can just for right now I'll show you this. Okay, and then like I showed you yesterday, we're gonna just kind of take your thumb, run it back. Let's see if I can show you this angle. Let's see here. Do you normally tie wing first? Yes, Harry. Wing is always tied in first. You want to set your wing, um, and go from there. Be that's the way I was taught all the videos I ever watched and, uh, you know, a lot of the books I read, it's all about the wing first. You get that set first. Okay, so on this, what I'm doing is I'm taking my finger and I'm pushing back. And you can see it'll split naturally. You create that natural split right there. And then they come up and you pretty much have your split. And then that's when you can come through and then just grab it. And then take and separate your wings. That's just... Push it back right on top of the hook shank, and it'll give you that split. And this is kind of what we did yesterday. We take that split, and we're going to do an X. 
come over the top. Oh, be helpful if I get in there. See if I can roll this. So come over the top right like this. Come over the other side and create. See if I can show you on camera. Zoom in here. See if I can show you that cross pattern here. You see that X. Where are I doing my bodkin? The X come across this way and then come across that side. And that's going to be going to give you a uh, back out. It's going to give you a start and that's when you take try to get all those over there and then come around and one or two wraps on there and I'll show you on this side. Come on this side. See if I can do this without looking and blocking. I'm going to come over wrap oh, I still can't see that I'm gonna wrap thread wrap around that wing base like so and then whoop, like so and then I'm gonna pull those up pull them up and then create a dam <laughs> Can you use just about any kind of feather like ring neck pheasant? Yes, yes, Shannon, you can. Uh, these are the ones, that are the, the mallard flank, stuff like that, are the typically the ones that are used for a lot of the cat skill. But yes, yeah, and I will, I will demonstrate that after this. We can use, uh, I'll grab any chicken feather I have. Any feathers can be used depending on the look you're going for. Um, these are typically used because they've got that speckle. They got that, if you look at a mayfly wing or something like that, they've got, they got that the veins going through it and it kind of just gives it that uh, articulation or whatever I'm looking at. Okay. Hopefully I'm still alive. Am I still alive? Everyone with me? Thumbs up? Maybe? Anybody? Okay. We got some thumbs up. Awesome. Okay. So yeah. I oh, hit the wrong button there. All right, so there we are. And if you got any stragglers, just pull them off. Just make a nice right there, and then you pull them up. Get your your dam going, and there you go. That is your split wing, just like so. Um, and then you come through with your hackle, kind of like we did yesterday with the. Uh, with uh, with the split hair, um, and I'll do that at the end of this. I'll go ahead and wrap the hackle on that one. But this one, we'll uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just go on to the next material. We'll try one of those chicken feathers. Strip this one off. Any questions on that placement of the wing gave me fits. I tried moving the wing ahead after tying it. Okay, so we'll try that on here. Well, let's um, get some more. What you're going for, and now this one I'm tying a little further back. You don't want to go too close to the eye because you want um, so let's see here. Remember, we've got the no tie zone right here this piece right here help if I get in focus here uh, you got this piece right here that you do not want to tie in and that is going to leave room for your head wrapping your hackles stuff like that so what you want to do is come you know Brent likes to use bodkin widths let's go three bodkin widths behind um, two three let's go three would be a good placement um, and then when you, let's see, I've got some feathers, let's go with some CDC, oh, no, let's do this, this is a good one for everyone, I'm going to use a bright color on this, um, any feathers, let's go with a couple orange ones I got here, got some orange tips, uh, let's 
see. I got these two right here. I'll pull them up here. So I got these two hackle tips that come from a, you know, one of my other hackles. Keep those tips like so. It was on the first series. Okay, yeah. The first one I can show you that. I'll uh, try to do a little, little uh, video later on that one, Randy, because the pair post is the same same principle, but uh, the little technique I do with that one is a little bit different for these. Um, but really focus on, you know, handling these threads, uh, or the thread and uh, material. So what I'm doing here is I'm gripping these, just like so, and I'm going to measure my length. I want them right there. Come in right about here is where I want them. And I'm going to do a little pinch wrap, just like that, let it drop, it's a bobbin drop, that's a technique used. Just a couple wraps there, come back, just a few loose wraps, like so. back snip off there's not that much bulk here so you can really just leave that snug all that up and tie remember wrapping this up and tying it in locks it in from spinning on you so that way later you come in now this one is a little different because we did two separate wings we're going to lift and grab i like to put my bodkin there and then give it a little pull Separate your wings. I mean, they're two separate wings, so separate them by the way they are and then just shove them down. You're just going to shove them down because those are they're already separated. And then once you've got that, let's create that little dam up front to stand them up a little bit more, like so. And then the same principle. When you come around, let's see if I can show this one. Come around, top, do the X there. Come around the back side, cross over one more time. We're creating that X. Now you can come up, grab, see if I can do it this way. Come up, grab your feathers, do a nice wrap there. Keeping it tight. When you're holding the feather, keep it tight. And when you let go of it, loosen up. It's going to slip on you. Stop there. Come back around. Grab this other one. Get a couple of wraps on it. Like so. And now you have, this is what you utilize for your mosquito wings when you're doing like a mosquito pattern. And there's that one. That's going to be those. And then you can preen these out the way you want. Oh, that's the nice thing about these feather tips is the, uh, they, they pretty much stay together. It's just the tips of the feathers. They're all natural, um, and you can get them, like I said, save all your tips to all your, you know, your hackles that you, for your wraps. Um, and I keep them in a little container like so. Let's see if I can back up. Just like that, it's got all, and I organize them with my Grizzlies here, different colors. I got all these different tips. Those, don't use them often, but I utilize them quite a you know, I mean, they're there, they're separated. I don't have to worry about cutting the tips off of feathers that I'll never use. Um, like that. And then, yeah, and then wrap your body up and then you can use your hackle. And then go from here, I would go to my tail. Get my tail in there and then work my body and then tie in the other hackle. Um, 
And that's that one. So any questions? Veterans, you guys got anything? Uh, don't be afraid to ask a question, anything I may know. And if I don't know, we'll find the answer. I'll post the answer. Um, like I said, these videos are going to be here. We'll keep them posted. Um, in the guide section, in the group, we're going to, uh, yeah, in the guide section of our, uh, at the top of the page. Now, what I will do, I wasn't planning on it, but I'll give you guys a bonus wing at the end. And that's going to be on your, uh, my throw you show you how to do a wet fly wing the soft tackle because those are my favorite uh, but uh, let's see. let me go through some of these here oh there's all my extra feathers so yeah any of the soft tackles I imagine you can do the same um, worst thing that'll happen is whatever feather you work you use um, you can, whatever feather you use, you, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, uh, but you may be able to. Okay, so let's see. Ellen's says, explain what a dry fly and a wet fly is, please. Okay, so your dry fly is going to, from my understanding, a dry fly sits on top of the water and or is a merger and it sits beneath the water. Some part of that fly is going to sit on top. And it stays dry. That's why we use rooster hackles. Um, they're they're very fine. They're very and they they're buoyant. They sit on top. They uh, a lot of times when you see the uh, their their fibers are very thin. Um, when you take a fiber like this, these whoop, let's see. It's focusing on my face. Let me zoom in. So when you use these fibers like this, these fibers are very, uh, and I'm, and I was talking with James last night and we may do, it's probably much needed is to, to do a hackle series, do one on hackles, uh, wet fly, soft hackles, palmering hackles, um, dry fly hackles, you know, stuff like that, tail materials and whatnot. But these are going to be your rooster hackles. Um, and they're going to be very, very stiff very stiff hackles and that's what allows it to sit on top of the water uh, what did I do with that one that I did yesterday like this one this is your dry fly that we did yesterday and that sits this is going to sit right on top of the water film the, the surface of the water uh, so they're going to replicate legs and uh, for a wet fly for instance you're going to have your your their softer hackles there there's a lot of them and they uh, they're not as fine let's see here if I can get this one right here and this is off of a neck they look like it but they're very soft they're not as you could if you can brush your hand they'll they'll stay and they absorb a lot of water they uh, they're just a lot softer material uh, and the difference is, is a wet fly is going to sink beneath the surface. The water is going to hold on to the, those fibers. Uh, a lot of your mallards and um, pretty much the only the dry fly hackle is going to be off of a rooster. And that's what's going to help keep your fly above water. Um, and then, you know, the, with the help of you know oils and things like that that's the nice thing about a uh, CDC feather it's one of your ones that are it's your one feather that is oily naturally oily and um, it floats because just the oil that comes out of the pring gland from the duck so and most of your your partridge hackles and stuff like that are going to be your your wet fly and more of your hen style uh, let's do this. I've got this right here. We'll take one of these purple. Hopefully that helps. Like I said, I'm still new at this, and I try my best to uh, explain it. Um, 
But here is, this is just a purple pheasant tail feather, or a pheasant feather off of the body of a pheasant. Um, so we're going to treat it the same. Now we're going to get a different style wing because of the other thing on these is they're, the, if you can see that vein in there, the, the rikus there, that's going to be a little bit stiffer. So we're going to get a little different results on that. Um, but we'll give it a shot. We're going to take it on here. We're going to, let's measure our wing. Now, a lot of times what you can do with these is I know what a lot of people do with the, uh, they'll use two of them, one for each side. As so. You get one, well, these two match. You get one from opposite sides, and then you tie these in, for instance, and it ends up looking, you tie them to each side, which we can do that. But you do one at a time. And then you take this swing here. This, that's too big. We're gonna make that a little bit smaller. Zoom in here. I haven't done one of these before, but I will give it a shot. Give yourself some of that, that rikus there. And then we want, you gotta pay attention to the curvature. We want this one to stand up. We want it to be opposite of the other one, so. I'm gonna take take your thread or take your stem just like you tie any other hackle and wrap over like so. Get it up there, just kind of placement, and then secure that stem. Okay. And we'll take our other one, size it up. Roughly about the same. Pull these feathers off. They just to get it the same. Like so. Match it up. Tie that stem in. And the nice thing about these having a thicker stem is you can really manipulate those. Um, get rid of this. And then once you got them in there, just push them down, give your little X. Same way we did the last stem is get crossover. like so so I'm just standing a little further up just give them a good push just like so and there you go there is your with these this type of wing uh oh did I miss something Jody, yes. Oh, okay. And there you go. There's just your pheasant tail wings there. Those are a little large, um, but then again, you know, you just kind of size them up the way you want. And it's the same principle, the same technique you're using to tie those in. And you just, you use your thread and then do your X, X wraps. If you wanted to sit a little bit further forward, just put a little dam back in there to get them to go a little bit more forward that way um, and the difference with this is we don't have a whole lot of body material built up so we don't have much of a, a taper here but that's okay now you got plenty of room for your other hackles and uh, so if you want to do another hackle there uh, the dry fly hackle with the rooster with your rooster hackle and that's on that one And that's how you put in, you know, you can use chicken feathers that way, pheasant tail, or uh, pheasant fibers, uh, pretty much, yeah. So what we'll do now is CDC, let's do a CDC feather. This one is a 
This one's in lovely material, and I'm going to show you this one because it's a pretty, pretty easy to use. And tomorrow, just so you know, tomorrow we're going to go over caddis wings, uh, the down wings, um, stuff like that. All right. Got your thread base, just like so. Wax there. All right, so CDC, let's do, got the white here. What happened here? Keep moving on me. So the reason CDC is so nice is because of all of these, just these fibers that just go everywhere. Um, and it looks so good when you're doing body wraps. Uh, oh, if you put one of these under a pair of posts on a parachute fly, man, it's gorgeous. So this one, you, I mean, you can use one if you like, or two. Um, a lot of times you can just, really, I mean, you can do so much with the CDC. Um, so what we'll do is we take these, same way we did the other ones. And what I like to do with these is you tie them in at the base, you know, right here. I like to have them splaying out, kind of even them up. I'm going to tie in right over this, these two, just like that right there. And then with your thread hanging down, pull them back, just pull them back. What that does is that it keeps all the fibers together. It keeps them all nice and tight together. And then just like so, that, that looks pretty good. And we'll take this, secure that back, just like so. And then over the top, lift this up and you cut your taper. It's going to be a nice little taper there. Oh, it hurts my heart to waste this stuff. So this stuff, and then you come back up. Well, you got to bring your thread back up. Like so. Create your dam. Just like so. Lifts them up. Okay, so let's see what I missed. So this thread you're using is non-wax thread to start with. Yes, Shannon. Um, most of my thread I use is unwaxed. Uh, I like to use, you know, my own wax. Uh, it's a beeswax mix. Uh... So yeah, I, d I like to thread it or uh, wax it as I go. That's just what I prefer. I don't have a problem with wax threads by any means. I The only thing is that I end up waxing it to uh, Rocky Mini Veteran, Veteran Binder say that the wings are only for fishermen. They look good. I don't know. I don't agree. What do you think? Beyond the fact that at the launch it sits much nicer with water surface yeah you know you get with your wally wings i think i mean the wally wings are i think more for the fishermen but i think what it does is i mean we don't see what a fish sees they see a silhouette under the water and uh you know a guy a book i read um a man may fish he talks about one of his flies the king's mill and he put golden pheasant uh toppings around the outside of it because underneath it looked like a halo uh of, of around a beetle so you know that's his wing for you know i mean look at just most of your salmon flies i mean it's uh his was a steelhead pattern for trout so uh he put the golden pheasant crest around the outside of it just to make it look like the sun when the sun was out it was a golden halo around this black the black feather so I, I personally believe the feathers uh, are, are the wings are seen by the fish. I think it's more of a silhouette than how we think. But I think the more detail we can put into a, a wing um, with your speckles and, uh, you know, from the natural looks of the feathers, uh, from the mallards to the CDCs, stuff like that. I think it, the more we can do to that, the better we can fool the fish with them. So I think it could be viewed both ways but from some of the literature and the reasons why some of the uh the the old school tires tied them they tied them with a purpose and uh you know i they they knew a lot back then 
Well, I guess we do now too, but that's my two cents on it. All right, we got them standing up, and depending on how you want these to sit, it goes the same way. A lot of people just leave the CDC as is. Um, you can, you want to post it up from this point, you could post it, you know, like we did on the, the pair post. You'd easily do this. Uh, I will say this out on the uh, CDC, however, there is a function, a functionality to that, and that is it repels water, so it's going to help as you know, a water repellent is too, to keep it above surface, depending on how many you use. <laughs> uh, I guess I could, this one I technically could. It's just on a large hook, so. But if I was to go ahead and just tie that one, and those wings are awfully big, but that's a good idea, Randy, we'll go ahead. I'll run this back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run that back right to the hook point. I'll come back up just a little bit. Right to the hook point is where I would go on that. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what materials I got here. What? Uh, let's see what I got. I just had some. Oh, we'll use. I've got this golden pheasant here. Where'd it go? Yeah, we'll just go ahead and, uh, well, you want a buoyant tail because this is a dry fly. I don't want to use a feather for that. That's going to be a, I want something buoyant here. So I'm going to use a couple pieces of moose mane. And take these strands of moose mane here. I'm going to line them up. Hand stack them, I guess you'd say. No, I'm not. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Change my mind. I'm going to do that. And, bear with me guys. I'm going to use... Where am I going to use? What am I going to use here? Well, we'll just go ahead and just do it for the hex of it. Right, use this one. Typically, I don't use moose mane for the tails because it's not as straight as the uh, no glue to finish the deal. No, I don't use, I'll, I'll seal the head with, uh, I usually, I'll seal the head with uh, UV resin, but uh, that's it. Go. Any other questions while I uh, go ahead and tie this tail in? I'm going to use four fibers of this moose mane. Hey, what's up, Bjorn? All right, so this tail, I'm going to go, I'm going to do a little bit longer. Just go a little bit longer than the body. A little bit longer than that body. And now I'm going to take this. I'm going to do it on your side so you can kind of see. So I do it on my side usually. Come over here and I'm going to, well, no, i got to do it on my side. Wrap it on the side. And this, when you tie it in the, for you, or the hairs, not you just want loose wraps. Okay? you don't want I don't need all that just trying to get that tail up there and the tighter you wrap when you do this hair it's gonna splay out I don't want them to splay out too bad so I'm gonna pull this up shorten it up a little bit there we go come in just a little bit more the nice thing about moose is it's a uh, Man, it's, it's a pretty material. 
little bit with that right there. And I'm just doing nice light wraps to the back. Watch your hook. I'm gonna come back to where the barb is. Right about there. Okay, and then I'm gonna come back up and then I'll do a little tighter wraps on the way back up. And then I'll take this and I'm gonna take, if you notice, I'm gonna take this tail material and I'm gonna trim it right about where that that taper was. I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna cover that in just like so. And that's gonna fill some of that gap. Now for the body, oh, let's see, we'll do, we'll do moose mane as well. Typically, well, we'll do, no, we'll just do W, 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 W. That's not it. Super fine. You go with this, you get you some dry, fine uh, dubbing. It's lightweight. It's good stuff. We're going to go with uh, olive, olive. So we're just going to go with an olive base. Really no design on this. Um, build this up a little bit. Since those of you who are done and you kind of get a gist of the wings, you can uh, oh, you know, see me do that. You, tomorrow's class should be. Uh, I will post it later, but we've got a. I've got a funeral to tend to tomorrow, so it's probably going to be closer to two o'clock range. It may be just kind of one of those. I uh, have to post as we go. Um, but, but yeah, we will, tomorrow's class is going to be on the caddis, uh, caddis wings. So, and then that will be posted for sure. Uh, no worries, Randy. It's a nice thing about doing these. You just kind of wing it. Um, and what I'm doing is I just build my body, just kind of slide tape, you know, I come up, do a few wraps, come up, well, that one was ugly. The more, you know, the least amount, the better. We are getting up to the top, so we are gonna start getting a little thicker as we get to the top. on that taper this is really not the best hook for this fly but uh, it's all right nothing wrong with adding your dubbing and then we'll create this taper right here because I don't I don't want to go all the way up to the back of the uh, the back of the wing. And the same, this same technique is going to be used for the split hair wing video we did yesterday. It's the same. You just you don't want to go all the way up behind. You want to give yourself some room for your. Uh, you got to tie in your hackle, as I'm telling you that, and I'm doing it. Give yourself some room for a couple wraps of that hackle, and. Dry fly hackle. Use the same one we used yesterday. Go here, pull your hackle off, just pull some of those barbs off. Pick out which side you're going to tie onto. You'll see the curvature of the feather. Back out a little bit. Alright, so back out a little bit. And then we cut the feather wing uh, the Barbules are coming down. So the side I'm going to tie in on, I'm going to tie in on that side, I'm going to pull some of those barbules off. So whenever I wrap around, it's going to, they're not going to get bunched up. Learn that from uh, 
Barry or Clark. All right, so now here I'm gonna wax my thread on the, uh, on the hackle. I'm gonna tie in right behind that eye, or right behind that feather. I'll pull this up, wrap this around so I can get that stem in. Pull it so it's not over the eye. Secure that in. Okay. And then now that's ready to go. Bring my thread up here. Shape my my hackle. Bring it around. Hold your feather tight. Up against the last turn, go into the last turn. wraps come up to the front right here make sure everything looks good there lock up you come up underneath keep tension on your thread up pull it back just to get in front of it, like so. Step, move your thread out of the way. When you come in, come in and nip that feather right out of there. Check everything, and then just hold everything back. Not You're not tying it in like a wet fly, just enough just to print it all back. And there is basically end result. Now this is where I'd whip finish the head and uh, go from there. And uh, that's kind of how you would finish that fly from start with the wing, work your way back, tie in your tail, come back up, dub your body, body material, whatever you wanted to use. Um, this one was the dry fly dubbing. And then tie in your hackle, your dry fly hackle here. Wrap that in and then let it go. Now with this one, we got the CDC here. We can, you know, that one could be laid however, you know, you want, but typically that's, goes up just like so. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll, we'll see one day. I'll try that one out. And I will go ahead and whip finish that. wraps in there and if you notice because I stayed I kept my focus away from that I had that no tie zone that no tie zone my head is very minimal I've got plenty of room in there for drops of cement uh, you know what Sally Sally Harder's nails whatever you decided to do so that's it guys that is Basically, your dry fly uh, split wing CDC there. But before you go, I told you all I'd do a bonus of a wet fly, uh, soft tackle wet fly, because these are my favorite. And we're on these wings. I'll do it. If you got to go, you got to go tomorrow. Tune in. I got, uh, we'll be showing off quill wings on Facebook Live. You know, Harry, I. Um, I was going to see what kind of interest we had, but I was thinking about doing that on Thursday, uh, doing just a simple slip wing setup, so that way we can uh, kind of give everyone an idea since we are doing the wings. Um, yeah, so probably Thursday, uh, depending on all works out and everything. So, um, but yeah, uh, yeah, I'll do. I'll probably do that for sure. Okay, last wing of the day and this is not a dry fly this is going to be your wet fly um, a lot of times you get your simple flies they're gonna be partridge and orange those are your easiest wet fly hackles I'm just gonna make this one uh, let's just call it the black partridge black and partridge or whatever um, it's a black body so on your partridge um, 
any chicken feather is going to work. You know, I'm just a sucker for partridge. Partridge to me is one of the prettiest feathers. Now, minus I have uh, the Contornix hen. I've, you know, I've got a lot of different soft tackles, but any of these, this is a soft tackle. Uh, it's got these barbs here. Now, um, they can be tricky because they're little. So just create this. Now a lot of times you see a lot of people they'll build up a little bulk right here in the back of the head. Uh, a lot of times that'll be like a thorax, you know, something like that. And that's going to give you something for that soft tackle to uh, lay over on. And uh, so what I would do on this, grab your soft tackle, come in, grab the tip of your feather, like so, and you're going to preen them back. Just like so. And that is how you prep that feather, and you got the feather arcing down. Okay, are you going to do the mayfly wing? The mayfly wing. The wood duck. Maybe I forgot. Remind me, Jody. Okay, this we're going to take this one, arch it back. Alright, so now I'm sitting with this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to nip it pretty close, just like so. And then take my, on my side, and I'm going to catch right there, right up under the eye and tie that in. Get that all wrapped in nice and neat. And then this is where you got to get your hackle pliers, whichever ones you prefer. Uh, be very delicate with this because let's see, let me come up a little. Because you can you can break this off pretty easy. It's a very delicate wing. Lick, lick your fingers a little bit and just preen them back just a little bit. You don't have to put too much pressure. What you want to do is kind of force these barbs to go around, all in the same direction. Come down at the bottom, this is what John Moore taught me. You get down to the six o'clock, preen them back again. 12 o'clock, preen them back again. Like so, get down to the six o'clock, preen them back. And then each time you go when you're putting that one, the thread wrap right in front of the other, preen them back again and down. Bring it back, and then you know it depends on how heavy you want it hackled. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and call it good there. I'm going to bring my thread wrap, come up underneath, and over. I, we lock it in, and then pull this out. Drop your bobbin, come in, get the rest of those fibers just like so. Move your hackle pliers like this, and then once you get that, get a nice couple wraps in there. Wrap over it. Secure it in. That is not going anywhere. And if that ricus is a little too thick, give it a good squeeze. You can pull it back right there. Nip it out just like so, and then build you a little head just like so. And there you have. Your nice wet fly wing. Tie. Let's see. There you. Will you be showing the quill wings? Okay, got that. Are you showing the may fly wing? Typed in, stripped down the stem. Tied in, stripped down the stem. Tied. Tied in. Oh, I might have to get with you on that. Figure out which one you're talking about. It's not ringing a bell. Does holding the feather keep it from spinning? Yeah, keep that. Uh, you keep tension on that, so that way you you constantly keep control of that uh, that feather, Randy. You want to keep control of the control of it, and that's what you're holding it, and also, um, yeah, holding it, and then uh, keeping the direction of it, and then that will be that. 
And then you throw whip finish in there, maybe. Come out. No day. So and that's it, guys. Uh, does this mean Wally? Does he mean Wally wings? Yeah, I think it's kind of what I'm talking. I'm not gonna go over the Wally wings. Those are more of your advanced, because um, those kind of classes can be. I was just going over the beginner wings just to get everyone kind of who's just starting out uh hold it until six and twelve yeah yeah six twelve o'clock preen them back six o'clock and then you wrap randy uh but yeah paul i'm not gonna go over the wally wings that brent's got a couple uh he's got a couple on those uh this one i just wanted to do the beginners on your basic wings that uh typically um tires you know beginners want to do and then uh with your post pair post your hip split hair wing for your royal wolves and stuff like that and then your split feather wings for your you know cat skills and a lot of your other uh wet flies and dry flies that you wanted to do so uh but tomorrow we'll go over um and then randy talked me into tying in a full fly but uh so tomorrow we'll do the caddis skill or the caddis fly um kind of like the elk hair caddis wing and the the down wing for uh some of the other caddis patterns the nymphs and stuff so uh all right i will yeah no problem randy so tomorrow i will uh it might be a two o'clock class two or later in the afternoon so that way uh no you didn't get me in trouble no um yeah, Brent's saying right here, Randy, he, or, uh, who is that? Paul, he did one on Wally Wings. Uh, we'll, we'll try to link that over there. Just this one, I just wanted to do beginners. So, uh, but yep, yeah, I will post tomorrow for the Caddis Flies. Thank you guys. And, um, we'll go from there. Hopefully you guys got it, something out of that one. And, uh, we'll chat later. Jody, I'll hit you up later. I'm trying to figure out which one you're talking about. But, alright guys, thank you.